Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and we love helping the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to antique a pair of shoes to add a little bit of extra patina to give your shoes just that added touch of character. If you have any questions or comments during this video, please feel free to ask them in the comment section below. I enjoy getting back to as many of those questions and comments as possible. Shoe antiquing is the process by which you produce darker areas on an otherwise light colored pair of shoes. Antiquing is generally associated with an older pair of shoes because shoes naturally darken over time as you polish them. Generally, this occurs on the edges of the toe cap and the heels. The natural process is just the natural buildup of the nutrients that you use and polish, the waxes, uh, the butters, just darken the leather. Over several years, as you're polishing a pair of shoes, you'll always see the color of a pair of shoes or the patina evolve and change. Now that said, a lot of new pair of shoes these days are being uh, actually produced with antiquing or discoloration of the leather itself, either through darkening or lightening certain areas of the leather, just to produce additional character. Now at the factory, this is normally done either through burnishing, which is where the leather is burnt with a fastly spinning wheel, or it is produced with an alcohol-based leather dye uh, where the leather itself is permanently dyed. Now, a third way that you can do this at home is by using a darker colored shoe polish to just simply darken those areas of the shoe you wish in order to produce the effect of antiquing. Now, the beauty of the Saphir Medal Dior Pigmented Cream Polish is that it has a much higher concentration of pigments and it's very effective at producing a do-it-yourself antiquing. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do this on a pair of walnut Allen Edmonds that we purchased for our $50 eBay challenge. Now, another benefit of antiquing uh, is that it can be used strategically to actually conceal water damage or any type of significant scuffing or scratching that results in the discoloration of your leather uh, beyond what a traditional uh, matching pigmented shoe polish can fix. Whenever you antique, you're darking this area and it allows you to kind of blend a darkened area of the leather that maybe was stained with oil uh, or maybe uh, a little bit of water or salt. Uh, and it just allows you to conceal those areas in addition to adding character to your shoe. So in this tutorial, these shoes have already been polished uh, using something like our basic shoe shine routine. Uh, you could even do this after, say, the presidential shoe shine. So what you're not going to see me do is I'm not going to polish the entire shoe. I'm not going to condition it uh, because in this video, I'm just focusing on antiquing. Now to further elevate the antiquing, uh, I'm going to first use the Saphir Dark Brown Pomodoro Cream Polish but then I'm going to use the Dark Brown Saphir Mirror Gloss to just provide some additional tint and pigment uh, and really make the antiquing stand out. So let's get started. In step one, I'm going to apply the darker polish to begin the antiquing process. It's important to remember that the Saphir Pomodoro Cream Polish and really all shoe polishes have a relatively transparent pigment. It's not like an oil paint that the moment that you put it on the shoe is going to totally and completely saturate and change the color. Because of this, it's important to apply several coats and to actually use a darker color polish that is one to two or even three shades darker than the shoes that you're trying to antique. If I wanted to, I could even use black polish, but I think that's gonna be a little dramatic for these uh, really light chestnut colored shoes. So here I'm gonna use the dark brown Saphir Pomodoro Cream Polish. I'm gonna simply apply the polish using a chamois, uh, and this is important uh, because you want to really massage the cream into the shoe itself, uh, applying medium to firm pressure just to ensure that the leather itself is receiving the polish and the pigments. Traditionally, antiquing is just kind of on the edges of the toe, kind of right here at the tip. Uh, you could even do a little bit of antiquing kind of right along this edge, which uh, I'm not going to here. Uh, and then of course, antiquing in the back uh, quarters of the shoe right at the heel. So I've got the dark brown Saphir Pomodoro Cream Polish and I'm just going to kind of tap this around and then begin massaging it into the leather. Now you can see just exactly how transparent this pigment is. 
So it's going to take several coats of polish uh, in order to allow these shoes uh, or the leather to begin absorbing that pigment uh, with enough to actually change the color of the shoes. After one coat, you can really see what I'm talking about, that the pigment and the cream polish, uh, although very dark in the jar itself, is actually quite transparent. So we're gonna have to apply several coats, four, five, six coats, in order to really produce the desired antiquing effect. And also, the more you polish the shoes over time, the better the antiquing will become. So as you're doing this, you're just looking for the leather to begin darkening along these areas. Uh, again, you know, you can really buffer uh, how dark or how dramatic the antiquing is by uh, selecting uh, a color of polish that either is a lot darker, like this dark brown, or only slightly darker. Uh, if I were to use a medium brown, again, it would be an even more subtle antiquing process. Uh, but as you can see, I'm really kind of rubbing the polish in uh, quite uh, aggressively with a really uh, medium to firm pressure kind of right here along the edges uh, where I wanna make sure that the polish is absorbed into the leather itself. Now, one of the important things to remember is that nothing is permanent whenever you're using shoe polished antique. Uh, you could simply come over this with the Saphir Reno mat if you were completely unhappy with the results and it would help remove a lot of this polish. So uh, nothing is permanent uh, whenever you're using uh, shoe polished antique. Now, if I was burnishing, uh, which you really wouldn't do uh, at home, or, or if I was trying to use a leather dye, uh, then the antiquing would be absolutely permanent uh, and you wouldn't be able to reverse that if in any way you were unhappy with the results. But as I really kind of push this polish into the leather, you can really begin to see this antiquing process take place. Now I'm not buffing this polish off yet because again, I'm just working on getting as much of this pigment uh, into the leather as possible. Then what we'll do uh, is we'll buff this off and then come over it with some wax polish to help really kind of further draw contrast uh, to the antiquing by elevating the shine. One of the things that I'm doing is uh, as I'm really beginning to build up this antiquing, uh, I'll take a little bit of the polish, uh, this dark brown polish kind of out of the area that I'm antiquing. Um, and the point is just to kind of help provide a little bit more of a fade so that it's not just a much darker area of the shoe and then uh, no transition at all uh, to the rest of the leather. So as I am kind of working this polish in, you know, once I'm just, you know, again, I don't have a ton of polish in my chamois, just a little bit. I'm just, you know, kind of working the rest of this area just to provide a little bit of that fade or kind of transition. Antiquing or that darkening uh, most commonly, again, is kind of along the edges, just because for whatever reason, uh, traditionally kind of as you're polishing, uh, the edges just seem to catch more polish and darken uh, more easily than say the top of the toe cap. So just to try to make this look as natural as possible, you know, I'm really kind of working, you know, the front of the cap and the sides more than I am the top. Okay, so I've spent about five minutes, uh, you know, five to 10 minutes, you know, really kind of massaging uh, that dark brown polish into the leather. You can really begin to see it kind of build up right here. Now, the shoe looks quite dull because I haven't buffed the polish yet, uh, but next I'm gonna buff the cream polish using a horsehair brush uh, to pull off any excess and to really begin to develop that shine. Uh, and I think that you're gonna like the direction you see these shoes going. Another thing that I did is I just did a few passes kind of along the side uh, and across the vamp. Again, uh, the darkening here is quite dramatic, uh, but mostly because we just haven't buffed off that extra polish yet with the horsehair brush. Because I've applied quite a bit of polish here, uh, several coats without uh, buffing it off with the horsehair brush. You'll want to buff quite vigorously uh, and really, you know, two to three times longer than you would normally a buff if you were just applying a simple cream polish with one or two coats. Now, 
Now, if there's any type of polish buildup in the broguing, you know, a simple trick is to just take your shoe shine brush and kind of tap that, and the bristles will get in those holes and grab some of that polish out. There's some polish buildup right here at the bottom of the upper where it meets the heel. And so I'm just gonna take my chamois uh, and really get in here just to kind of smooth that out uh, because I don't like the way that that looks. Uh, again, you kind of see it right here. Again, your brush isn't going to be able to get in there and your chamois doesn't get in there very easily either. So I'm just gonna really take this and push it in uh, to the leather uh, to get that out. And more buffing. Oh yeah, looking fantastic. Okay, so just right here, uh, we've only done this once, right? Uh, as we do this additional times, right? So you could do this two, three, four more times. Uh, you can see that we're beginning to build up a nice, beautiful antiquing uh, on this right shoe. You compare it to the left one and you can really see uh, the difference uh, with what we're talking about. I think that actually this shoe is really beginning to look great. This left shoe is a beautiful Allen Edmonds and Walnut, uh, but you know, it's just a little bit one dimensional. I mean, you don't see much kind of dimension uh, or any patina in the shoe um, and that's great, right? But on the right shoe, you know, that we've polished with this dark brown polish, you know, you really can begin to see a little bit of dimensionality and character and texture begin to develop. You know, it creates a slightly more casual shoe, I suppose, uh, but certainly one with more character. Uh, and it really looks nice if this is something uh, that you enjoy. You know, the heel, I think, looks particularly uh, good. Um, you know, you compare this to the heel of the other shoe. The antiquing just gives the shoe a little bit of that subtle character. Now, if you were happy with these results and the really nice soft shine of just using a cream polish, then you could stop here. But for this video, I'm gonna take it even a step farther uh, by applying a little bit of a dark brown wax Pat Deluxe polish. And then I'm gonna use the dark brown mirror gloss on this toe and the edge to just further draw the attention to the beautiful antiquing that we've accomplished. I'm actually gonna start out first with the uh, mirror gloss. Now, if you haven't seen our series on how to do a mirror shine, uh, check out our series that we have on the YouTube channel. That's an extensive five-part series that goes into great detail about how to not only produce uh, the ultimate mirror shine, but how to maintain it and what to happen uh, whenever it begins to crack, which inevitably happens. So here, I'm using our Hanger Project High Shine Chamois, and this is the Saphir Mirror Gloss. Now, as you can tell, uh, it's quite a dense polish because it has such a high concentration of those hard waxes that allows you to produce uh, that mirror shine. Now, I'm just going to apply this uh, onto the toe itself. And again, you'll see a little bit of the original patina begin to shift. Uh, the simple reason is that especially wax polishes contain solvents in them. And so the solvents will help kind of melt off some of that original patina, if you will. So that's why it's good if you're antiquing your shoes, you definitely want to be using a wax polish in the same color uh, of the uh, antiquing. Now, I could have gone for a slightly lighter brown maybe because the pigment is darkening this a little bit, but uh, there's not as much pigment in a wax polish as there is a cream polish, so it's not as dramatic. Okay, so I'm applying a generous coat of the Saphir Mirror Gloss. I'm gonna do the same to the rear of the shoe. Now you wanna smooth this out as you apply it to make sure it's not uneven because if you have any uneven contours in the mirror gloss, uh, you won't be able to buff that as easily because it's a hard wax and it'll prevent the shine from really coming out. Okay, so we've got one coat applied. 
Then the next step is to find a clean portion of your chamois. Take a little bit of water and begin to buff this to a shine. So the dark brown mirror glass is actually uh, uh, continuing to darken that cap. So I'm actually gonna transition to a neutral and just see how this works. I'm gonna switch to a clean area of my chamois when applying this because I don't want any of the dark brown pigment uh, to run off, rub off. Uh, I'm gonna switch to a clean area of the pig chamois just so I don't have any dark brown pigment rub off onto the wax. Uh, if it did, it's really not a problem. You can just simply clean it uh, with a chamois, but uh, I like to avoid it if I can. So again, another generous coat of the mirror glass because remember, we're using the mirror glass to really build up that foundation of hard waxes that we are then going to use to produce that mirror shine. Now you can see a little bit of pigment rubbing, rubbing off on the chamois. It's totally normal. Again, uh, even a product such as the mirror glass that has a really high concentration of hard waxes and a low solvent uh, ratio uh, still is going to pull off a little of the polish and pigment. It always happens. It's totally normal and not anything to worry about. So again, just applying a nice, generous, thick layer of the mirror gloss on the toe cap. I'm gonna do the same on the heel. Now what I love about the mirror gloss, again, is that it dries very quickly, especially compared to something like the Pat Deluxe. You know, if you were doing this just with the Pat Deluxe, you'd honestly wanna have a hair dryer with cold air blowing uh, on the Pat Deluxe just to kind of help uh, expedite how quickly it dries because you can't buff the polish to a shine if it hasn't dried yet because what you'll end up doing is just kind of pushing it around on the leather uh, versus buffing it. So it's important that the polish is dried uh, the wetter the polish or the more solvents in it, uh, the longer it's going to take to dry, and that's why the mirror glass dries so quickly. Okay, so we're on the third coat of the mirror glass here. Uh, now I'm gonna start using a little bit of the Pat Deluxe as I buff this off. Again, the Pat Deluxe really works absolutely brilliantly in conjunction with the mirror gloss. As higher solvents, you really want to think of as almost wet buffing. So I'm not going to apply much. Uh, maybe that was a little more than I should have applied. Uh, and so just a little bit of water, a little bit of Pat Deluxe. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going to begin that process of the buff. Now you really wanna kind of feel the polish at this point. As I said earlier, it needs to be dry. So if you feel that the polish is wet or it's not fully dry or it, uh, just it feels soft, then uh, you know allow it a little bit more time to dry. Cold water helps harden the waxes. Um, so that's another trick you can use. Uh, you can put it under a fan or a hair dryer just to give it some air, but uh, otherwise, you just wanna start buffing it to a shine. A little bit of Pat Deluxe. Here you just, if you look at this, you know, it's just, you know, I'm really just tapping it. Just a tiny, tiny amount of Pat Deluxe uh, on my chamois. Another benefit of using the mirror glass and the antiquing process is that these hard waxes will actually help seal the pigment into the leather uh, and protect that uh, pigment from coming off. So if you were to rebuff this, you don't have to worry about really affecting any of the original pigment that you put on with the cream polish because it's behind several layers of these hard waxes from the Saphir Mirror Gloss. A little bit of water, a little bit of Pat Deluxe. Just 
just a nice buff. Okay, so I think we're really close to being done. Just gonna buff across the vamp one more time. There's a little bit of a dark smudge there uh, that I'm gonna try to get off. So a little bit of pressure, water, and honestly, like a neutral wax polish is actually a fantastic cleaner. Again, because you've got those hard, um, you've got the solvents, which are going to help loosen or soften any of the waxes and pigment and pull that off. So I just took a little bit of my mirror gloss, but it would have been even better with the Pat Deluxe. And that came off pretty easily. So I'm just gonna buff this with my chamois. Now the High Shine chamois is really exceptional at producing a High Shine. It's why we created it here at the Hanger Project. Uh, we actually got the idea, uh, you know, from a lot of the uh, really renowned patina experts in Europe. A lot of them prefer to use uh, literally cut up cotton dress shirtings uh, as their High Shine chamois, which is what this is created out of. And for buffing a wax off of a, a shoe and producing a high shine, there's nothing better than the high shine chamois. The really tight cotton weave uh, is perfect for producing a really high shine uh, out of the wax polish. A horsehair brush is great for buffing creams off and you can use it to buff a wax off, but it's not gonna produce a beautiful high shine uh, like what you're seeing here. Uh, even just along the edge, you know, with the high shine chamois, a uh, little bit of water, is just gonna produce the higher shine than what you could ever get out of a horsehair brush alone. Okay, so I think we're done here. Uh, you can see the right shoe. Uh, I've produced a beautiful kind of antiquing effect along the toe, along the outer edge, uh, and the back of the heel using the dark brown Saphir Pomodier Cream Polish and some of the mirror gloss combination of the dark brown neutral and a dark brown Pat Deluxe. If you look at this shoe, you know, next to the left shoe where we didn't do anything, you can really see just how dramatic of an effect we were able to produce just using the Saphir shoe polish. This shoe has incredible dimension to it. You know, I, I, I shined up the toe and the heel, which again helps further kind of draw your eye to the areas of the shoe where you antiqued it. Uh, and I'd say, you know, that between these two shoes, uh, the right one certainly has a tremendous amount of additional character and dimension by virtue of the antiquing that we just performed. If you have any questions or comments about anything I discussed in this video, please feel free to ask them in the comments section below. I enjoy helping you guys, answering your questions, and I try to get back to as many of those questions and comments as absolutely possible. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications by clicking the bell to the right of the subscribe button so that you know whenever we release new videos. And of course, please visit hangarproject.com where we have the largest, most comprehensive collection of luxury garment care and shoe care accessories in the world, as well as many other incredible products for the well-dressed. And while you're there, subscribe to our newsletter to receive notification of new product launches, promotions, as well as a weekly digest of all the videos we publish here on our YouTube channel. I'm Kirby Allison, and we love to help the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes. Thanks for joining me.